Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is William Lee, and I'm an Assistant Director of Admission here at the University of Denver. Uh, before we begin with our presentation, uh, I want to just introduce some house rules uh, to all of our participants here today. You'll notice that we have a Q&A chat box, which you can drop all your questions during the course of this briefing. I would ask that anyone who wants to drop in questions, you're more than welcome to during the course of the presentation. However, our presenter and myself will answer any and all questions following the conclusion of the briefing. And so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, in addition, I may drop uh, some additional directives in the chat box, so stay tuned for that. And you also have the ability to enable closed captioning, which is available on the bottom of your Zoom screen. And without uh, further ado, I would love to welcome and introduce our guest today. He is Dr. Michael Kerwin. He is uh, an associate professor in the Environmental Science Program and the director of the National of the Environmental Science Program. And with that, I'll turn the floor over to Dr. Kerwin. Will, thanks very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. I hope you're having a, a good evening. Um, wherever you are, it feels like it's probably evening to most of us. Um, yeah, Will said, my name is Mike Kerwin. I've been at the university for 22 years. I'm a professor in the Department of Geography and the Environment and uh, the head of our environmental science program. And uh, therefore, I'm delighted to speak to you about uh, what we do at the university and how you might find a home with us. Um, but really, I am representing this group. Um, we are a group of 19 faculty members um, excellent teachers, great researchers, um, committed to exploration, travel, um, some really interesting people was just uh, collaborating uh, with a, a colleague, Hillary, yesterday about a graduate student of ours who's interested in looking at drought, but possibly looking at drought through the lens of bird migration changes um, with this huge database through eBird, which is kind of interesting. And um, last Monday was uh, talking to my friend and and colleague Hansen here. Hansen does research in uh, Africa, in Ghana, and my research is mostly in South Africa. So um, we were sort of collaborating on, on um, potential topics. But um, this is our group. And for those of you um, on, the, on the call tonight, we're kind of guessing that you're um, not in Denver, maybe you haven't been to our university. Um, it is a lovely campus. Um, the, the, the university itself is uh, on 80 acres. We're about six miles from uh, downtown Denver. Here's some pictures. These three on the right are of campus. And then um, our department, separate from campus, we have um, some labs and facilities as well, including um, we have a, a lab and research space about 45 minutes away on the flanks of one of the, the highest mountains um, in in Colorado, just renamed. Um, it used to be called Mount Evans. It's called uh, now called Mount Blue Sky. Um, in addition to lab spaces that you would expect in a department like ours, and usually with with everybody, um, you've sort of been pre filtered, right? You kind of know what you're coming into. Um, but I think it's still worth you know putting this out there that. Um, this is who we are trying to speak to. We're, we're, we're asking you, hey, are you interested in the environment? And really, this could be a number of different things. Um, this word here, sustainability, has really gained a lot of traction in, in great ways in the last five years. Um, but other things, other words that you might see here, uh, earth systems, geography, um, geospatial technology, even environmental science. If this is ringing a bell to you, um, we are likely to be your academic home at the University of Denver, but not necessarily, not necessarily. And I, I want to walk through that with you. So in our department, we have four majors and about 200 students. Um, kind of do the math there. We have 19 faculty members, 200 undergraduate majors. Um, we also operate six minors with approximately 100 students, but um, when you're doing a minor, you're majoring in something else across campus. And so you're not necessarily in the, in the department as much. Um, something that is really important to all of us is our um, small class size here, 17 students per class. And don't, don't be misled. We are not a liberal arts college. So 
Um, we do not offer 17 students per class in every class that we teach. But once you get into upper level advanced classes in our department, um, anywhere from uh, 15 to 20 to 24 is going to be common. Um, there are a, a handful of introductory classes that would have more than that. Um, I'm currently teaching an introductory hydrology class with 88 zero, um, and but that's as big as they get, and it's very few classes that are that are like that. Um, we uh, the four, the majors that we offer. I'm going to run through them uh, right now for you, and we'll start with the. Um, the largest of our majors, our environmental science major. Um, currently, we have about 140 students. And what I want everyone to see is this word, science. Um, we offer two different degrees, the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science, and they're separated only by some physics and some advanced math classes. So in other words, both of these majors, whether the, the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science, are going to be heavy in the sciences. So you're going to do a whole year of geography, geology, atmospheric science, a whole year of biology, entire year of chemistry, and then if you choose the BS, an entire year of physics. Um, you're then going to do elective classes, but the added opportunities when we talk about study abroad, research, and internship, we don't really think of these as, as added. We think of them as almost um, mandatory, and I'll explain that. So for some of you right now, you're probably like, okay, that sounds cool. I'm in, and others are leaving the call. Um, it, that's a lot of science, okay? And if you do not want to be doing the biology, chemistry, physics, all of that, we still could very well be your home. And that is because our uh, second largest major is our geography major. And it is uh, much, much more accessible. In fact, most of our geography major students do it as a double major. Um, You've got your core curriculum in physical and human geography, but then we also spend a lot of time with cartography, geographic information sciences, statistics, um, in addition to elective classes. So what you don't see here are the biology, chemistry, physics, that type of thing. What you do have over here are the classes on humans and the environment and things that might be very appealing. Um, Along the same lines, um, if you don't want to major with us, if you end up finding another passion somewhere else on campus, we do house um, a very large and very popular minor. It's called the sustainability minor. Um, by the way, at our school, uh, the way it works is that everyone has to do a major and a minor, um, which was a little bit different from where I came from. That wasn't all that common, um, but it, it's really nice in that it, kind of gives people the opportunity to specialize in something and then have sort of a subspecialty in something that can be either complementary or quite different. Um, our sustainability minor um, offers classes in uh, environmental classes, but also economics and social justice. Um, there's a capstone class where we try to get students out into the community. So uh, very popular and another um, possibility. Um, lastly, we have a, a brand new major, although three years old is not brand new, but um, pretty darn new. Um, just after the pandemic, we started a, a major in geographic information sciences at the, at the Bachelor of Science level. Um, our department is quite strong in geographic information sciences, and this seemed like a natural for students that were um, very quantitative, very mathematical, very good with um, computer programming. Um, so the, the the GIS minor is growing. I think we we started as you would with no students. And last year we had about five and I think we're up to 12 students. Um, this is one of the few majors um, at any at any university really where the, the job market is pretty strong coming out because your, your geotechnical skills are, are very good, very strong. Um, but let's be honest, the reason that, that all of us, um, all of my colleagues and I found um, a department of geography and environmental science is our passion for being outside, <clears throat> for experiential learning. And we really try to do the best that we can to get our students out into the field. Um, we teach classes that have field trips. It's not 
Um, it's not the easiest thing with our schedule, but we have to do it. We're, we're 20 to 30 minutes away um, from this picture that you're seeing right here, a beautiful ponderosa pine woodland. Um, but our students also participate in experiential learning in many, many different ways that you see here, um, starting with study abroad. Um, this is actually a, a picture of myself here with three students in Thailand. Um, I was lucky enough to spend the sabbatical uh, with my family doing research and teaching in Thailand, and I got to interact with some um, University of Denver students who were on their study abroad. Um, like every other university, we have not bounced back from our pandemic numbers, but participation in study abroad at our university has always been very high. And um, our, in our department, it's been even higher. Um, and we are getting there. The, the greater than 80% participation, we're not quite back to that, but all indications are by next year or the year after that we will. Um, DU makes it very easy. There's more than 200 affiliated programs. Um, depending on your uh, grade point average, they'll help you out with a visa and a plane ticket. Um, and so study abroad is very important for our environmental science and geography majors. Um, we also offer a capstone experience. This is a little bit unusual and quite, quite a great program. Um, so for seniors, mostly senior majors, we offer a field-based capstone project. Um, it requires an application to get in and it's taught on a block system. So um, our normal academic load is four classes. That's what you would take per quarter, we're on a quarter system. And so in the fall quarter, you would take four classes if you were accepted into our field quarter, but they would each be taught for about two and a half weeks. Um, you take class number one, um, and then two and a half weeks later, class number two. And the beauty of this is that they can be taught anywhere. Um, I teach my class mostly in New Mexico and Southern Arizona. My colleague teaches in California. Um, occasionally the class even goes out of the country. So um, another <clears throat> way that we build in experiential learning. Um, but if you can't do um, our field quarter, which is, which is quite competitive, and you maybe can't do um, study abroad or you want to supplement, um, one very, very special thing about our quarter system is that we get six weeks off between Thanksgiving and the new year. Um, and it's, it's a long enough period of time that some students choose to go home and get a job or what have you, um, but others choose to take faculty-led um, travel programs. And um, you can see that um, here we are in Denver and there's all these different destinations um, from Hawaii to Peru to Cape Town, South Africa, where I actually teach to locations in London. And these are the programs just in our department. This isn't through the entire university. This is just in our department, travel programs that anyone can participate in. Uh, this is one that I finished off teaching about a month and a half ago. Um, so I teach an interterm class in, in South Africa called the Geographies of South Africa. You can see it's about a two week um, experience um, for students. And December is really excellent. It works great because we have a longer holiday in late November and December, like I said, compared to other schools. But uh, these interterm classes are not just in December. Um, here's a, a colleague of mine that has offered a class in New York City, and he does this actually during spring break. Um, very, very interesting um, uh, look at New York through the lens of an urban geographer. Um, or two of my colleagues, Helen and Hillary, who um, offer classes during the summertime. This one um, taught in England, and you can see in June. Um, so these are uh, just other opportunities for experiential learning. Um, finally, as I wrap up here, we are also about four years into a partnership with um, two universities, one in Australia and one in Sweden, where um, a select number of students might decide that they want to spend five years um, uh, and at the end of those five years, come out with an undergraduate degree in environmental science or geography from our university and a master's degree from one of our partner schools. And again, the, the two partner schools are Lund University. This is in uh, 
Sweden. I have not visited. Um, I've been invited to visit twice, and each time it is in February, and I think I will pass. I don't really care for winter, uh, but I've heard Lund is just a brilliant place to be, and so when they invite me in June, uh, I will be there. But this is one of the top um, universities for climate change research in Europe, and a place that on this Global Scholars Program, you could end up with your master's. The program that I am much more familiar with is in Perth, Australia, Western Australia. Um, this is the University of Western Australia. It's actually the top rated environmental science um, program in Australia. And um, perhaps if we have a North American focus, we, we might giggle at that, thinking about um, Australia as a, a smaller place, but it's actually a place that is committed to environmental practices and sustainability. And so this is quite the program. Um, so the Global Master's Program is not for everyone. It's a, a small mi a minority that might be interested in uh, undergraduate degree from our, uh, our department and a grad degree from one of our partner schools. And there's only two partner schools. Um, I end, um, you know, kind of, kind of thinking about the motto that that our university puts out there and these words. And as I said, I have been at, at the school for more than twenty years, a, a private university dedicated to the public good. And I think I probably mocked the, these words at first. I probably was like, "Well, that's kind of beautiful and all, but." Is it really meaningful? And you know, now as I as I settle into my work and I look at my colleagues uh, year after year returning um, with, with people who are now friends and doing work uh, within the community. This is Ghana. This is Nicaragua. Um, these are my students in um, South Africa. This is a picture from KwaZulu Natal, uh, South Africa, the bullseye of the global AIDS HIV epidemic. And so here is myself and students. Um, doing service, but more importantly, returning twice a year everywhere, fostering relationships. And so I think we do back that up a bit, a uh, uh, private university dedicated to the public good. And um, I am delighted. It looks like we have um, about 10 minutes still, which is exactly what we wanted. So um, I hope I've provided you a little bit of an introduction on the Department of Geography and the Environment and um, would, would welcome with Will's help. Um, the opportunity to answer any questions for you. So thank you. Will, if you're there, I think I'm gonna have you moderate this. Okay, perfect, wonderful. Thank you so much, Professor. And with that, uh, we will be happy to take questions from anyone. If you have any questions at this point in time, please, drop them into the Q&A chat box, which we will find at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you drop your questions in there, uh, Dr. Kerwin and myself will try to answer all of your questions, um, either verbally or um, via the chat box. So. And please know that there is no stupid questions and no questions are off limits. So uh, please be very, very open. So thank you, Dan. Looks like the uh, questions are streaming in. Uh, Dr. Kerwin, would you like to take uh, t talk a little bit more about? Let's see. Yeah, I see. I think I see. Uh, Debbie, thank you. Kind words, um, uh, John. Um, we, John, we, we, we try to um, would love uh, more contacts. I think. I think, John, what I would like to point out with your question. The question is, do you collaborate with the National Renewable Energy Lab? Um, one unusual thing we have in our department is that one of my colleagues, uh, Chris Kuzera. He's a professor in our uh, department, but half of his job is fostering relationships with um, with local and even not local entities, um, including the National Renewable Energy Lab, 
uh, the United States Geological Survey, the National Park Service. Um, so we have this internship program within the department. Um, I want to be very careful to say that if you are a student in our department, Chris is not going to walk up to you and hand you an internship, but you can set an appointment with him, talk to him, he can kind of get some ideas. So we have partnered with uh, NRAIL in the past and hope to do more. Um, uh, I'm looking at uh, anonymous. How are these field activities funded? Um, all sorts of different ways. Um, study abroad is is done at our university at the tuition um, that you pay for DU. So whatever you end up paying for DU after all of your scholarships and grants, um, study abroad is at that price or less. Um, the interterm classes, including the one in Cape Town, that has an added expense, um, but they're quite generous on scholarship with that. And then our field quarter, the one I showed you, um, that is funded through our department. So all the transportation and food is covered. Um, obviously, you have to pay tuition on that. Um, second, anonymous, thank you. Uh, is financial aid an option for these travels? Yes. Um, so uh, that is something I want to reiterate is that they are very generous with financial aid, especially for the interterm classes. Um, there is still an expense, um, and it, but the, the travel is, is break even expense and they are um, quite, quite generous. Um, the DU definitely accepts AP credits, um, AP calculus for sure. I'm the one who evaluates AP environmental science. As long as you have a four or a five, you will get credit for that. Um, that is probably safe to say the university policy across the board, four or five, and you're going to get credit. Um, and a great question about minors. Um, you can do any minor that you want, although there's a couple majors like our GIS major, that new one I told you about. That one requires one minor in computer science or mathematics, but that's very unusual. With environmental science, you can minor in anything. And I love it in that uh, one, of, one of the students that I was just with earlier today is minoring in music. Another one is uh, minoring in anthropology. Um, so it's across the board and I think that's really great. Um, how many students do we expect in the GIS program next year? Um, don't know that, but if we're continuing to grow, I don't know. That's a great question. To go from zero to, I think I said five to about 12. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how big we'll get. That's a really good question. Um, where do the seniors tend to head after graduating? Um, yeah, before the pandemic, um, just under 50% were going to graduate school within three years. Uh, it was actually 48%. Um, haven't tracked that um, since the pandemic. I would think it's probably pretty similar. So graduate school is, is the most common pathway. And within graduate school, it's usually going to be the, the research-based masters um, in, in various different fields, whether it's in geography or geology or chemistry or biology. Um, research jobs are absolutely things that our students do after graduating, but they tend to be internships um, that very rarely do students come out with a bachelor's degree in environmental science and go straight into a job that turns into a career that kind of turns into their life. Um, it kind of begins at a paid at a paid internship level or sort of a temporary thing. And then usually students who love that pathway will go back to graduate school. Um, collaboration with DU Business School. We, we, we do, yeah, we do. Um, it's, it's more informal um, than formal and in that we don't actually have um, programs where, where you can um, like take a class taught by a business professor and an environmental science professor. Um, but I was working with a student, her name is Mary on Tuesday and, and Mary is very, very interested in corporate sustainability. And so she's kind of designing a major and a minor and playing around. And right now she's doing the BA degree in uh, environmental science. And she's doing a minor in a uh, business. I forget which specialty of business. I apologize on that end. So we do. Um, research opportunities available to the students are um, that it, it kind of depends on uh, two things. It kind of depends on the interest of 
the the student, but also it kind of depends on what the faculty are doing. So all of us at, at the university are doing research. So we're both teaching and doing research. And so sometimes a student can get plugged in um, to the research program of a faculty member. Um, our department also has a small graduate program. We have a uh, a master's and a PhD in geography. And so there are some graduate students around that can also help undergraduates um, plug into to research. Um, and uh, last question with our time, you guys are great. We have three minutes left. What kind of analytical or software tools will students learn throughout the program? We are plugged into the um, ESRI software um, we kind of jargonize that as Esri. So that's all the different geospatial mapping software, um, ArcMap, ArcInfo. Um, our students uh, have a choice of doing their statistics in R. That's sort of the, the most common software package that we support is R. Um, but I am um, surprised at how powerful Excel is. Um, for a lot of our students who are just sort of uh, putting their finger into statistics. Um, but um, besides that, uh, I, I, I think that's about it. We were just having this conversation at a faculty meeting earlier today about the huge broad array of geotechnical software and how it's um, probably about to be complemented with artificial intelligence and machine learning software that I'm not too up on, but uh, my colleagues are. Um, thank you. Look at us. Will, we did it. We got one minute to go and, um, thanks everyone. Oh, one more, Alex, we got one more. Um, how many more classes do you have to take to go from a computer science minor and a GIS major? Um, so the number of classes that, so if you do the GIS major, you will end up with a computer science minor um, unless you choose to do a math minor. So with the GIS major, you automatically have to do a computer science minor um, or a math minor. Um, and there's, there's no extra classes. So the GIS major is just like every other um, program on our campus where they are designed to get you out of there in four years. And that is something that we do exceptionally well. Um, it is very uncommon to see a student stay for a fifth year. Um, so you're not really going to have to take extra classes if you choose the, the GIS major. It is streamlined and designed for you um, to, to get into it and to, and to get through it. So um, Alex, I hope that might answer your question. Wonderful. Right. This was cool. Well, thank you. Fantastic. Um, I want to thank Dr. Kerwin for taking generous, so generously, generously taking time out of his evening outside normal business hours to sit here with our attendees today. I know our admits absolutely appreciate your time uh, to speaking with them. And uh, I also want to thank our participants for, for, you know, joining us this late into the evening um, all around the world. And uh I hope you found this very informative. I know I certainly found it very informative and hopefully this answered many of your questions in regards to the uh, geography program and the opportunities that are available post-graduation as well as during your time here at university. And um, if you have any specific questions in regards to admissions, I'm gonna drop it into the chat. Uh, please feel free to contact our office or your admission counselor. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions that you have. And um, Thank you again, everyone, for attending. And um, I thought this was absolutely phenomenal and fantastic. And um, have a good night, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Good night.